QuickBooks Online 2024 Budgeted Income Statement Data Input. Get ready and some coffee because QuickBooks Online is even quicker to the trigger than Quick Draw McGraw. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Gear Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation, opening the major financial statement reports as we do every time. The reports on the left hand side in the favorites, right clicking on that balance sheet to open a link in a new tab, right click the profit and loss to open a link in a new tab, doing the same with the trusty TB trial balance. Let's tab to the right, close up the hamburger and then change that range. We're gonna go from 01, 01, 24 tab, 02, 29, 24 tab. I'd like to see this side by side, so we'll select the drop down months and run. Then tab to the right, same process, closing the hamburger. Changing the range, 010124 tab, 022924 tab, drop down months and run it to refresh it. Tabbing to the right, closing the hamburger again, changing the range, 010124 tab, 022924 tab, drop down months and refreshing the report once again. Let's go back to the income statement. In prior presentations, we've been thinking about the budgeting process, which can be found for the data input in the cog up top and the budgeting. However, typically we're gonna need to create the budget before we do the data input if we want any more detail than simply a budget based on past data. So what we might start with is exporting the, uh, the financial statements, starting possibly with the profit and loss report, to Excel using Excel to then make adjustments and predictions into the future as we did with our worksheet over here. Once we have our budget put together, we can then upload it back into the budget within QuickBooks, allowing us to run reports such as budget versus actual as time passes. So we have exported the two months of data. We did so on the trial balance for the two months combined as the total here, because that's where our data was. We then took the average of the two months in a similar way as you might do for the average of a year as our starting point, our monthly averages per account. And then we made adjustments to each account according to the, to the good advice of all the, all the wonderful people involved that are making changes to improve this organization. Okay, so then, so the revenue is going to be increasing uh, greatly because of all the all the amazing changes that we put into place. So now we need to put this back into QuickBooks. So there's a couple ways to do that. Let's go to the first tab over here, and we could hit the drop down up top and say we're going to go into the budgeting. I want to import this in. Now I have it in Excel, so you would think possibly using the import would be a way to go, and we might check. We might check that out. But let's first just look at the budget creation screen without the import first to get an idea. So I'm going to say tab. How do you want to set up your budget? Select your preference. We're going to first be looking at the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement. It's going for 2024. That's what we want. So I'm going to be picking that one and then available setup options and then custom budget create a budget from scratch. That's what we're going to be doing because it's the only budget we have thus far. And then again, we could import it, but let's take a look at this before we think about the importing. All right, so in this screen, we have the drop down over here. Here's our, here's our period. We got the actuals. So, so we have the 
compare reference. So we have a compare reference to the actual year to date of 2024, or possibly we would want to look at the prior years, uh, for example. And that would give us our, our column over here. That would be a, quite useful, possibly, if I was just creating the budget from, uh, from prior information. But in our case, it's not going to be as helpful given the fact that we already have uh, our data that we exported. We can also toggle between uh, yearly budget. So we have the yearly budget, the actuals for 2023, the quarterly budget. So then it gives us our actual numbers on a quarterly basis. There's only information over here and the end for us and then the monthly uh, information. So we have that. But I think it would be easier for us to toggle this off so that we can just enter our information. The total is on the left hand side and then the months across the top for a monthly budget, which is kind of the most common type of budget. Now, obviously, we could just go into our data input line items now and go one by one, say like entering $100, for example, and then copying it across. And by default, it copies that across, right? And we can basically repeat that process. Now, we don't have a lot of stuff to do our, our kind of calculations. Remember, you would think that like in the desktop version, they have some ability to, 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 to multiply each column by, uh, by like a percent right like we did in excel so you can see the easy kind of increases you can try to increase it by uh by a rate so this is 1.05 so uh, i didn't do it for this one so this i took the prior one times 1.05 it increases by five percent or we can in increase it by a fixed amount each time like a thousand so but we don't have those kind of options over here possibly because they recognize that if you're getting into more complex information like that, you might be using Excel and then importing it. So let's now close this. Let's think about their importing feature. Do you want to sit, leave without saving? I'm going to say leave and let's think about importing it now. So let's say we wanted to import a budget. And then once again, it's going to be for 2024 consolidated. So if you are already got a budget uh, onto your template, you can skip this. I'm going to say next. And then I'm going to look at their budget template. So I'm going to enter their template, which should be in Excel. We basically created our budget from the template, but I didn't do it from like an in. So here's the template that they have here. So let's just see what it says. So use this template to get your data into format for QuickBooks uh, understands. QuickBooks uses the budget details on this sheet to read budget type, timeline, categories, and so on. When you update this info and save the budget with a new name and budget period, you're creating a new uh, budget. Okay, so do not change the sheet name. It says do not uh, change the rows or column labels. Uh, rows with invalid entries will be ignored during the upload. So we want to keep everything basically the same because it's copying kind of our chart of accounts, right? Leave unwanted columns or rows uh, blank. I think that says blank. Uh, you can edit the budget in QuickBooks once the update is complete and then add columns only at the end uh, and not in between. So you can add or remove rows as needed. The accounts you see in the template are taken from uh, the company chart of accounts to which you want to import your budget. So you can format the template, rename your budget and add in numbers uh, and formulas, enter sales values only between these large numbers. Okay, so here's our actual data. So here's the actual budget. They took our chart of accounts. Now notice the chart of accounts is going to be a lot longer than just our income statement. Why? Because for example, QuickBooks gave us this massive chart of accounts when we started the company file but we're only using a small fraction of the counts within it. So your budgeting will be a lot easier if you were to clean up your chart of accounts. So for example, if I right click and duplicate this tab and go into the, uh, I'm gonna close this out. Yes, and then I'm gonna say, let's go into my transactions and then into my chart of accounts. See, the QuickBooks by default gives us this massive chart of accounts because they try to give a chart of accounts that covers 
every type of industry instead of specializing based on the information you provide to them. So that chart of accounts is going to be a whole lot longer than our actual income statement. If you went in and made inactive a lot of those accounts, hopefully they still would not show up on the budget and your budgeting would be a lot easier in this data input uh, system. Also note that our income statement has these subcategories and when we exported it, we used the trial balance because we wanted to make it as, as clean as possible without the subcategories and whatnot. So, so that means you know we have, we're gonna have to just copy and paste our information into basically the budget information, just trying to make sure that we get the proper lines lined up. So let's see if we can do that. Let's go back on over here. I'll save the budget. All right, and then we're just gonna, so now, so, so now I'm just gonna go over here and say, okay, it, this would be a lot easier if we had two screens, right? But let's see if we could just do, we might be able to even, if you see it this way, I can put it side by side and say that might be workable actually. So I can say, here's my, my uh, billable income. Here's my billable income over here. So I'm gonna make this one green maybe as I go, try to see if I can line this stuff up and then I'll just copy this whole thing. I'm just gonna copy, uh, I'm not the total. They don't want the total and then just paste it. Maybe I'll paste one, two, three uh, without, the, without any formulas. So do, 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 it goes out to December, perfect. So then we could just do that all the way down. So we're gonna say, all right, that one's done. This is the equipment. So, so this one was here. Oh, see, I got it on the wrong line already for crying out loud. So that's why the subtotals are no good. So I'll pull this down to here and let's color these as I go. So we did that one. And so now we're on the equipment. So equipment, let's make that one green and that lines up to this one. So I'll just copy that do, 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 and copy and then put that here, right click, paste in it. One, two, three, uno, dos, tres, cuatro. That's gonna be values only. And then we'll do this one. This is gonna be for the sales. So that lines up to this one. So let's go do, 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 and copy that and we'll paste that right there. Mui B to the N and then be nice if they had some formatting so it looked like a number, but that's okay. Actually, let's change that. I'm gonna select all of the area in between because I don't wanna mess up the date formatting up top. I'm just gonna take this huge box and then format it in a number format. So I'm gonna right click in it, format the cells, and then let's make it currency, negative numbers, bracketed, get rid of the dollar sign and the decimals. Okay, so there we have it. All right, so then we have the services. Let's copy the services. Now I see a problem when we get to the negative numbers because I don't think they want negative numbers. So I'm gonna put this in here, paste it. Uh, one, two, three on the services. So we did that one. So now, oh, I didn't wanna make it italicized. So, so now maybe I'll copy my template over and switch these numbers to positive so that it'll be easier for me to copy and paste them over here. So what I'll do is I'll make another tab. I'm holding down control, left click and dragging to the right. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this whole thing, all these negative numbers and copy them. And I first want to paste them down so that there's no formulas. So I'm gonna right click and paste them one, two, three. And so once they're in there with no formulas, as you can see in the formula bar, I can copy them again and then right click and paste special and I want to make it subtract, which hopefully will flip the sign from negative to positive. So up oh, and it didn't do it. Hold on a sec. Wait, let me do it again. I'm going to undo that. Undo that. Something went horribly. Hold, let's copy it and paste it over here because it tried to subtract what was already in the cells, I think. <laughs> so let's paste it over here and right click and paste special and subtract it over here, boom. And so now it flipped the sign and then I'm just gonna copy that and place it right back on top so that they're now pasting one, two, three. So now I just have positive numbers. My net income no longer makes sense down below, but that's okay. And then I can delete all of this stuff. It has served its purpose. It has served its purpose and now it shall be deleted.
Ha ha ha, it shall be deleted. Oh, wait a sec. There's my... <laughs> okay. I'm going to shift up. Sorry about that. I had to, I'm still working on my soundboard. Okay. So this one over here. Okay, so that's good. So now we're going to say that was services. And then so we have cost of goods sold now. Cost of goods sold is going to be down here where we don't... We just put it into... There's a parent account. And then I think we just put it into one account. So we'll just put it in here. Cost of goods. Copy that. And we'll put it right here. I don't even need to paste it one, two, three, because that now everything is just numbers. So that's good. And then we've got the bank charges. Bank charges. Where are those over here? Bank fees, expenses, advertising. Duh, duh, duh. See, this is why. See, it's way down here because I have all of these accounts that are we're not using. That's why we should go back and delete those. It's ridiculous to have all those accounts. I think I copied the total last time. That's okay. I'll delete it later. So then we have the liability insurance. So insurance to, 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 to liability. There we go. Let's do that one. So I'll copy that one over. Copy that. Roger. Roger out. Copy and paste. Okay. What else do we have? Internet. We've got the internet expense. So this is right there. That looks like it. So let's copy that. 90 bucks across. $90. We'll paste that. Just normal. Boom. All right. We're really moving now. I have the system down. Taxes. This is payroll payroll taxes and wages so i'll go payroll taxes Duh. make that one green copy over boom payroll taxes bam and then the wages i'll copy this because that's right underneath copy boom wages bam so payroll taxes and wages okay and then supplies supplies we'll copy that across do, 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 do. copy that supplies do i need to put it in the parent account i think i just put it in one parent account i'm not using the subsidiary account for that one so we just put it right there and then telephone expense the tele the tele I think the British people call it the tele or something. I don't know. I'm going to copy that and put it right there. And then we're going to say then utilities. Utilities don day. So I just put it into one parent account for utilities. So we'll copy that and we'll just put it there. That one. And then, see, if we didn't have all these added accounts, it would be easier. I don't have that one. There's nothing there. Depreciation. Depreciation. Don't day. There it is. It's under other expenses. Okay. All right. If, that, if you say so, it should be there. Copy that. Depreciation. Depreciation. And then boom, boom. And then other miscellaneous uh, expenses. Do, 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 other miscellaneous expenses. Last one, ultra vez. La, uh, so we're going to say other boom. All right, so I think we have everything. Let's make this large. And then I think I added a total column out here on one of them. No, everything looks clean. So yeah, here's I, after December, that column N, I'm gonna get rid of column N, there's no totals. Okay, so then, so I have some funny formatting, which hopefully doesn't throw off the system when I import it, I'm gonna make it non-green. And so I think that's everything. So let's save this and 
and import it and see what happens. So we're going to say close this out. I'm going to close this for now and then I'm going to locate it. So here is the file. So that's the one. It's an Excel file. So we'll say, okay, so instead of a CSV file, which they sometimes require you to use. <laughs> so now we're going to say, boom, let's go back into my budget. So if I go back in here, do you want to, do you want uh, to cancel the import? I'm going to say yes, just to show us how to get in there again. So we were in the budget to do, we're in the budgeting, the budgeting here and then we're creating the budget we want to import the budget and so it's a budget and it's for 2024 consolidated i'm going to go next and then it says download budget and then and then so it says all budgets in one place so use the template we'll give you uh, to get your data in a format quickbooks understands find out more about the, the import okay we've done that uh upload the budget upload the budget and so I'm going to go boom, it's right there. So it's in an Excel format. That's the one to do it. So we'll say next. And so now it's working on it. It wants to know if it did a good job. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. QuickBooks, it's a little premature budget created successfully. Sit back while we make sure all your data comes in correctly. Okay. View the budget. All right. So there we have it. So now it's basically done the data input for us. Now it's hard for us to kind of check the bottom line when it was in the budget template in Excel, but I think here it might give you a, 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 a but. So here's the net income that we have and it comes out to uh, through December to, and then the budget total net income is at 129, which I don't think is correct, I don't believe. See, we thought it should come out to 125. Uh, 970 and we have here 129.43 now I'm gonna I'm gonna save this and note that we can go back in and fix it so we'll do that in a following presentation so I'm gonna save it and then I'm gonna I'm gonna analyze it in the reports which I think is easier to do in the following presentation and then we'll go back into the budget and make an adjustment for that so I'm gonna go ahead and save it for now and say doom there it is and then I'm gonna close it and then if I go into my reports, then, well, now we have our, our budget information. I go into my, uh, my uh, hamburger. <laughs> Let's go into the reports and see if I could search for a budget report. Now I have these two budget reports, which weren't there before because I didn't have them. So we, let's take a look at the budget overview. And then this gives us basically the overview. And then the budget versus actual will give us a comparison between what has happened uh, over time, which we have two months of data input. And so we'll take a look at that later. But for now, I'll use this report to kind of see what where we went wrong and then make an adjustment to it. And this might be one of the better, like the best way to do it, because again, their template, if we get it right in Excel, we can use Excel to then populate their template, which is a little bit more difficult to, to calculate net income with, although we could have done that. And then we can import it into into QuickBooks and see what went wrong with their data input template and see if it would be worth re-uploading it again, fixing the template, or simply just adjusting the budget within the system, which we can do by going to the tab to the left, dropping it down, and then we go back into the budget. And then so here's our here's our actual budget, uh, run budget versus actual, and we can edit it. So I can go back in and and make the adjustments to it. So we'll get into that more uh, next time.